Now, let's tackle this issue of bias at the ABC and the way that Ida Buttrose has opened up about it and spoken truth to the Australian public. I'm joined now by former chairman of the ABC, Morris Newman. Thanks for joining me, Morris. Uh, when you were chair of the ABC, what was your approach to claims of bias? Well, initially, I'd like to push back and think that the bias wasn't there, uh, which I think you do in the, in the sort of in the, the flush of your early appointment. But the longer I was there, the more it was apparent. I gave a speech which, which uh, brought the house down, uh, particularly because I happened to mention climate change in the sense that the ABC wasn't sufficiently curious. And it went downhill from there. And I don't think things have changed at all. If anything, they've got worse. So Ida Buttrose, of course, is aware of this history. She's seen what, what's happened with previous managing directors and, and, and chairs of the ABC. So she would have been very considered about making these remarks, a very brave uh, statement to make, you would have thought? I think so. I think she's certainly stronger recently than she was when she was first appointed, and I suspect that's because she's had the experience from the inside. Well, let's just have a look uh, at uh, a little bit more of that exchange, listen a li in a little bit. It was on Melbourne ABC Radio with the host Raphael Epstein interviewing Ida Buttrose. Sometimes I think we might be biased. I think sometimes we could do with more diversity of views. I haven't got a problem with anybody's view, but I think we need to make sure as, as, as diverse as we can make it be. I think we've actually got a longer slab of that interview where we hear a bit more of this exchange. No, we don't have that, unfortunately. That'll, that'll do. But anyway, we get the gist of it there, uh, Morris Newman. The point here is I think Ida Buttrose has come up with the right prescription, hasn't she? She could hardly say we're going to root out bias from the organisation, get rid of every leftist presenter. That would, uh, would, would be impossible and create all sorts of a backlash. But her idea of let's try and get a bit more diversity into the opinions uh, of our people, that's, that's a way to at least diminish the problem. Governance issue. She is a non-executive chair and therefore she has to, and the board, with, with, uh, her, with the support of the board, get the new managing director to sign on to this whole approach about being more curious and bringing in people who are not of the left and who aren't uh, staying with the narrative which is, that we, you and I are now discussing. I mean, one of the things which I think we need to also understand that this is a culture that is endemic. It's not just in news and current affairs. It comes through in comedy. Even the kids' programs now have... Uh, there's a, there's a, there was a, uh, a program on there which dealt with male, uh, white male privilege, where a child was trying to... Little caricatures were trying to get across a creek. The poor uh, dark-skinned uh, girl had to swim... Somehow or other, the white male was teleported across. So there's this indoctrination that goes through, and this is endemic. So I think we, we've gone beyond now that this was just contained within news and current affairs. Yeah, look, the thing here is, though, uh, that the charter of the ABC works against this idea of diversity because while it demands a plurality of views, it says that... Uh, it says that everybody's objective, that they're not supposed to have opinions. So it's hard to bring in people with right of centre or conservative opinions because everybody there at the moment, sure, there's this leftist culture, but they all pretend to be political eunuchs. Well, we know that's a pretense. We know that it isn't true. The notion that there is no bias in the ABC is a lie and it cannot be supported on the empirical evidence. So we should forget all about that and deal with the fact that it is biased. And it requires, really, the minister, the shareholding minister, who represents all of us taxpayers, to actually uh, get a, a stiff spine and say to the ABC, we need to, um, uh, to apply certain standards and give the chair and the board some support that if the ABC does not comply with its charter then its funding will be cut. My personal view is we need another Dick-style uh, inquiry, which uh, was a long time ago, it was 1981, because you need to have a sweeping look at what is going on in that organisation. Every time there's additional funds, we find that 90% of the, the funds which uh, go to uh, increase their budget are siphoned off by the staff, uh, either in in wage increases or, in, in, uh, or else in more people being employed. 
So it's not going to programming. The whole issue of programming, I think, is a question mark. So, as I say, it is, it is endemic and it needs to be rooted out. Whether it's possible to root out is another question. Well, there's a good opportunity here because you've got a new minister in Paul Fletcher, a new chair uh, settling in in Ida Buttrose, and, of course, a new managing director. But he's of the ABC, David Anderson. It's an inside appointment. Uh, and do you expect that if they uh, look to address any of this sort of reform, there'll be a lot of resistance, powerful resistance from staff? Absolutely. I mean, uh, for a start, uh, shortly after he was appointed, David Anderson, and just before the election, in the middle of an election campaign... He essentially said, you better vote for anybody other than the Coalition, because he said that the Coalition was going to cut the budget of the ABC by 84%, uh, 84 million at least. It wasn't 84 million, it was in the, in the 2018 budget where they were talking about a 3% inflation rate, which would have been effectively over the forward estimates $84.9 million. But if you were to actually take the real inflation rate, which is about 1.3%, you bring it down to about 28 million. So even then, we get an exaggeration of what the uh, coalition was planning to do. And even then, the, the, the ABC received a top up of $44 million from the government prior to the election. Plus the fact that the, the uh, ABC lost 70, $79 million last year without a murmur. I mean, it's, uh, it's just ridiculous. Now, when it comes to bias, I would have thought in the wash-up to the election uh, you couldn't have got a better demonstration of the leftist groupthink at the organisation given the hundreds and uh, thousands of employees across the country, the hundreds of people involved in covering national politics and yet not one of them said the coalition was a chance to win the election. No, because they tell their viewers and their listeners what they themselves hope. So you are not getting independent, impartial commentary. The ABC should not have a view. And as you were pointing out earlier, that is not what the Charter is about. But everybody now has a view. And as I say, even when it comes to kids' channels, we have indoctrination of uh, white male uh, privilege and all of this sort of thing. Well, at least uh, Ida Buttrose has started uh, speaking truth to the public and the organisation. We'll see where it goes from well, we here. We wish her luck. Indeed, we do. Thanks for joining us, Morris Newman. Pleasure. Morris Newman there, of course, a former chair of the ABC.